CrossFit isn't exactly what we do. We part of what we do is CrossFit. We will give it to you if you need it. Uh, maybe you need personal training. We'll give it to you if you need it. Maybe you need just you know bodybuilding. You need it. That's what we're gonna give you. So uh, every time someone comes in, right, we assess them first. We assess them in terms of uh, their physiological, uh, uh, physical state. We also assess their goals. We also assess uh, their. We also assess them for whatever it is that is preventing them from seeing the kind of results that they want to see. So just now I mentioned the story about the, the client who uh, the client who is having problem with chocolate. So this client, we traced the problem after uh, many conversations. Uh, we realized that part of her issue um, is that she she equated chocolate to happiness, and so every time she is unhappy, had a fight with boyfriend. Boss go, yeah. should immediately reach for chocolate without a second thought. So um, once once we once we pointed that out for her, she tried to change, but she still couldn't change. And so we delved even further into that, and and I didn't tell her anything. We just I just asked question. Most of the time, our coaching session is gonna feel like we're just having a conversation. Um, so yeah, uh, after after that happened, right? We we, we figured out that. Um, the root cause of it all is actually got to do with her stress management. Now there's, there are a few ways you can handle stress. First way is you can just avoid stress altogether. But is that really feasible? Not really. Not really, right? You can't avoid stress. There's no way you can avoid stress. Uh, the second way is that you can do something to alleviate stress. And that is uh, what people normally do like drinking alcohol. You can do things like uh, just chilling out with friends, and then they can drink, or make, or we can go, go. They can do some positive things like traveling and reading a book, or just entertaining yourself. But it can also lead to some very unproductive things like Netflix until two a.m. in the morning. You know, it can it can lead to having chocolate. Uh, it can lead to drugs. So the third way that we can do uh, to to uh, manage and handle stress is by making ourselves strong enough that the amount of stress that happens in our daily life becomes inconsequential. You see? So there are many, many ways that we can, we can go about this. So and that uh, meant, meant that she is able to do the things which she needs to do in order to see the results that she wants to see. And now she has never looked so good in her life. Uh, so that's how, that's how it works, unraveling of the blocks. So um, aside from this, right, Basically, when it comes to training with me, um, this is more like consultation. So I can give you a free membership over here. And the reason why we need to ask and understand this is because many times, um, what we think we want versus what we really want may have a disconnect. So when you when you say uh, when you say a reason why, it has to resonate with your and go. In order for you to feel truly motivated about what you're doing, whatever you're doing must be must be very clear that it has got to do with your end goal in life. Because if it is if, it's, if it doesn't have any connection with your end goal in life, you will find automatically it's extremely difficult to find the discipline and the motivation to do so. As an example, I once had a client who told me she wants to burn fat and she says she wants to burn fat because she wants to be able to take nice photos with her friends and the reason why she wants to take nice photos with her friends is because she wants to be confident uh, wherever and wherever she is and I said and, and we, and we delved even further than that and we discovered that the reason why she wants to be confident and is because she wants to be a star she wants to sing so, so, so if, we, if we hadn't gone until that level, what's going to happen to her is that she's still going to be training here thinking that it's still just about burning fat. Now, burning fat, whether you burn fat or not, may not matter. But whether you achieve your dreams or not, that matters. Correct? So, um, just now you said that you can be honest with me. So if you can really delve deep down and tell me what matters to you the most. How does that got to do with your number one priority? How does looking good, looking better, feeling more confident got to do with your number one priority?
in a, one thing I've learned in fitness is that you don't have to do anything. There is always many, many different ways that we can approach certain things. Subscribing to only one school of thought tend to always end in a roadblock. So before we I, before I can advise you on what direction some people do need to burn build muscle first before they can burn fat. Some people do. Some people just need to burn fat. Some people don't need to burn fat at all. They just need to build muscle. You know, so so in order for me to arrive at the kind of uh, at the kind of direction for you, and if I will first need to understand what is for you the ultimate goal. I need, to, I need to see your picture of your vision. We, I think we should focus a little bit more on the diet. Um, in terms of, but before we get into the diet, in terms of training, I just need to explain to you first. Mm -hmm. There's actually nothing wrong with routine. Mm -hmm. Routine doesn't, doesn't cause you to stagnate. Lack of increase in terms of intensity will cause you to stagnate. Intensity means? Intensity? Like means work over time. Reps and weights and all of that? Reps, sets, weights, rest time, all of those things are components of intensity. Okay. But they are not uh, the components of work. Okay. So if you put intensity into a mathematical equation, yeah. it will be I equals W over T. Intensity equals work over time. So as an example, if let's say the time is one minute, um, and and your work is work is four times distance mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, like if you use your own body weight, in one minute you did uh, forty squats. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fast. Thirty squats. <laughs> okay, and then another person uh, in one minute did ten squats. Mm -hmm. That means your intensity higher. is higher than that person. Yes. yes. Are they both doing the same workout? Basically, uh, if I say the workout is do as many squats as possible uh -huh. in one minute. You did 30 and this guy did 10. Yeah. Using the same weight. Maybe not guy like girl, same weight with you, same height with you. Then your intensity is higher than the other person. Yeah. Yes? So it means that you did more work over time than the other person. Yeah. But you are still doing the same workout. But I'm doing more intensity, right? Yeah, but the same workout different scale. Different scale meaning? Different intensity. Yeah. yeah. Different intensity doesn't mean that. So, so using your routine as an example, you can do 5x5 five five squats, but if you do 5x5 five five squats with 50 kilo, and another person do 5x5 five five squats with 80 kilo, that means the other person do the same workout with you, Yeah. but that person has more intensity. Yeah. That make more sense, huh? Yeah. Great. So, weight, rest time, Sets and reps, these are all just uh, just factors that contribute to work. But they are not necessarily uh, the, the they, they, they govern the intensity. But uh, you doing the same exercise with the same sets and reps does not mean that you are doing uh, the same, that you are doing different workout. So just now you, you mentioned that you, were work, you are concerned. Every time you go there, it's like boring same routine but truth of the matter is what if I tell you strength and adaptation is best uh, is, is best through periodic adaptation periodic routines so as an example if you do if you focus on certain, uh, I have a lot of powerlifting guys over here by the way so throughout the year they do squats mm -hmm. there's always the, the changes in between each blocks are not not drastic they just manipulate the sets, they manipulate the weights, yeah. they manipulate the reps, and sometimes the rest period, but they don't necessarily change all the time. So they would do things like, if let's say they need Bulgarian split squats, mm -hmm. then they would keep on doing Bulgarian split squats until they don't need it. So sometimes you do, so there's a difference between um, your main work and then your accessories. Mm -hmm. Things which support your weaknesses. So sometimes they have a very weak, maybe, maybe they feel that their left knee uh, 
it's weaker than your right knee. The left quadricep is weaker than the right quadricep. So what they do is they sometimes do both your wrist squats for that reason. Left, and then they make sure that uh, both using the same weight and the same reps to make sure that the left can catch up to the right. Mm -hmm. But they always have that main core. Yeah. You know. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you is you must always have a core, mm -hmm. and then you supplement that core with certain additional exercises that reinforce your weak points. Mm -hmm. So as in, so when you when if if someone goes to the gym and they say that oh I like boots so I'm gonna work on more boots. Uh, if let's say your, your problem was in glutes and you keep on working with glutes, then you're not going to solve the problem. Yeah. So as an example, if sometimes you see someone has a flat booty, mm -hmm. is the glutes really the problem? May or may not. Because sometimes it may be due to posture. Mm -hmm. What if the glutes are flat only because the lower back is not strong? Okay. Okay. So this person keep on doing um, glute isolation. Mm -hmm but didn't think about the lower back at all, mm -hmm. then the problem isn't going to solve. Mm -hmm. Makes sense or not? Mm -hmm. right. so, uh, so, have, so in terms of uh, in terms of direction, we need to understand also uh, what is the problems that you have. But don't be worried whenever you feel that uh, this is getting too boring or whatnot. The truth of the matter is, uh, you can switch around the additional things. Mm -hmm. The core of certain things should maintain and your core should be catered to you. Make sense? Okay, so having said that, normally, uh, even if you just go online and just search up, when I say when I say program, I don't mean workout. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give you a program. Probably one of my coaches will write it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we will give you a program. But uh, there's a difference between program and workout. Do you know the difference? Workout is like you Google or you look at Instagram today, do this one and that one and this one and that one and this one and that one. Okay. That's a workout. Okay. Or maybe a training. Training routine today. Today's training okay. routine. But a program is, is planned. This first month we're going to concentrate on one, the second month we're going to concentrate on one, the third month we're going to concentrate on one. Uh, so you have a periodization, you incorporate certain things. So, like uh, my coaching. So, uh, have you, tell me if you've heard of this before. The key to building muscle is actually happen uh, after your training. But during your training, you sort of have to tear shit down. Mm -hmm. So that after that, you will have a super compensation that will build your muscle up. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. Great. So it means that the potential of how much muscle you can build after your training depends on what you do, depends on the intensity of your training during the exercise, during the session. Yeah. Right now. So having said that, uh, do you think that six is the best way to achieve the kind no. of intensity required? No, right? So uh, what do you think is the right kind of intensity to achieve that? When I'm really sore the next day. So what is from a scale of one to ten? How how would that be? How would that be? Yeah. Ten. Actually, not not necessarily ten. Yeah. So in, in fitness, we have something called a RPE. RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion. So as long as you get between like 7 to 8, it's good really. So all you need to do is to be used that you need to ramp up the intensity of your, of your training. Uh, nutrition. So once you create that potential for muscle building, then you have to fill your body with the right uh, nutrition. But here's the thing. Protein is the building block. If you, uh, just to put it into perspective, right? Protein is the building block, yes. But if let's say you're trying to build a building, and you supply the construction site with lots of building blocks and you don't have enough workers, what's going to happen? You won't build also. Yeah. So how do you get more workers? By hiring more of them. And you need? Money. Correct. Yes. So in our body, that currency of money is carbs. Okay. Carbs produce energy. In order for you to, in order for you to max out and really perform very well during your training, you need energy. So if you have, if you don't have enough carbs for the purpose of muscle building, if you don't have enough carbs, what's going to happen is that you you may not be, even though you feel that it is you're pushing it, you may not actually be pushing it to the potential that you should be. 
understand? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, just to drop back a little bit on the on the workout time. There's also the thing something called a progressive uh, overload. Have you heard of that before? No. No. Progressive overload means every time you go back to training, uh, doing the same thing, your intensity should increase. Mm-hmm. Your weight should increase, okay. or maybe your set should increase. So as an example, if you do 4x8, so let's say this week you squat 4x8, um, let's say 40 kilos, okay? And the next, the next week, can try, I don't, many, I don't want to be two ways, you can try do 3x8 by, by 1x9, by 3 sets of 8 and then 1 set of 9, that's a, that's a sign of progressive problem. Wait, 3x8? And then, because previously it's 4x8 now. Okay. So now it's 3 by 8 and 1 by 9. Uh-huh. Make sense? Or maybe you do uh, 2 sets of 9 and 2 sets of 10. Make sense? Using the same weight. Yeah. Or you can increase the weight mm-hmm. that goes from 40 kilo to 41.25 kilo. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so either one of which ways or so, uh, the, the, there must be progressive overload mm-hmm. that is required for increasing muscle, okay. increasing strength. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but in order for you to do so, if let's say your amount of muscle remains the same, no progressive overload is going to happen. So in order to feel that, therefore the cups. So a lot of people, they always think that, okay, in order for me to build muscle, I need to have more protein. That's partly true. You need to have enough protein, but you also need to have enough energy. Carbs. And calorie, uh, caloric surplus. Heard of that before? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't really understand what understand. that means. Okay, cool. So just to so explain to you, caloric surplus means if let's say you need 2,000 calories, yeah. uh, you need to eat more than 2,000 calories. If let's say 2,000 calories maintains your body weight, mm-hmm. you need to eat a little bit over 2,000 calories so that your muscles can increase. But the good news is, uh, but, but, that, but there's a danger over there. It's quite complicated when it comes to calorie counting, especially if you're, ever, if you're not used to all of these things. Yeah. You eat a little bit too much, you may find it difficult to, you know, uh, you may gain fat. Mm-hmm. If you don't eat enough, you can't build muscle. Mm-hmm. So just, just to browse through certain things, uh, your whys dictate your uh, positioning. Mm-hmm. Your why dictate how you should uh, address this. We've learned that you actually want, in order for you to build, uh, to look the way you want to look, the most important thing for you right now is to build muscle. We determine that, right? Okay, we determine also that the biggest stumbling block uh, is primarily your nutrition and secondarily your exercise, right? Uh, we've also uncovered that what you think about, uh, we also learned something along the lines. We also learned about progressive overload and that intensity equals work over time and that, and that you need to increase your intensity in order to build muscle. You've mm-hmm. learned that, right? Yes. Okay, and you've also learned that protein isn't the only component needed for muscle building. Yep. You actually need carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, uh, you and your, you and your, I will assign a coach to you. Okay, I will assign a coach to you. 